Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Indian Zor Education. Well, today is a very special day, and there are two major reasons which kind of coincide. Um, the one is today is a total solar eclipse, uh, which is a very remarkable event by itself, obviously, and uh, also to commemorate that particular <laughs> that particular event. This is my um, last lecture. Uh, of the course of uh, advanced math for teenagers and high school students. Um, uh, most likely I will add to the course certain exams where they don't exist and maybe some other little details, but generally speaking I consider the theoretical material presented in the course to be rel relatively complete and my plans are to go to start physics for teens. Um, that's another advanced course of uh, physics for high school students primarily and teenagers. All right, so back to business. Um, this last topic which we have um, discussed before is about double integrals, double integrals. And um, uh, I have exemplified this particular topic in the previous lecture with the volume of the cylindrical um, of a cylinder basically. Now um, in this particular lecture I would like to apply um, exactly the same kind of technique to have calculated the volume of the pyramid and again we know the volume of the pyramid from the geometry course so we will just check if we will get exactly the same results uh, using integration. Now, I have to add, actually, that the volume of the pyramid, as it was explained, presented in the course of geometry, uh, was, uh, how should I say it, it was a sneaky way to introduce integration, basically. Because I remember uh, where we were talking about this, we sliced uh, the parallel planes, the, the pyramid, and basically uh, went to a limit whenever the difference uh, between uh, the different planes is going down to zero, the distance between them. So it's kind of a, uh, I would say, a sneaky way to, to introduce the same concepts which uh, integration puts on a solid mathematical foundation. So I'm going to do straight integration in this particular case using, uh, as I was saying, the same approach as in the case of uh, the cylinder. So. Um, again, what's complicated in this particular case, that our base is not rectangular. So whenever we are dividing it, we are supposed to choose one particular um, dimension, uh, let's say x, as, as a primary, and have x actually uh, varying from the leftmost to the rightmost. But for each particular x, my y has certain limits which depend on the x. And here is y. Now, this is the pyramid, which is basically inscribed into um, uh, the coordinate system. So I just chose three uh, points, a, b, and c, on axis x, y, and z. And the lengths uh, uh, from the origin o, uh, point a is lowercase a, point b lowercase b, and point c is lowercase c. So. Um, we have to calculate the volume of this pyramid and as we know it's uh, one-third of the uh, area of the base times height, right? So area of the base is, it's a r uh, right triangle, let me just write it down here. So this is x, this is y, this is my point A, this is my point B, this is A and this is B and this is my triangle. So this is my base. So the area of the base is a times b divided by 2 and then we should multiply by height since all these angles are right angles obviously the height is c so my total the volume will be one third of one half of a b c so the volume is equal to one six a b c this is six all right, so that's what we have to get. Now, um, how are we going to integrate? Well, the same way as before, we will divide our base into small 
rectangles. Obviously, not exactly, because this is a triangle, so the edges are uh, obviously not coinciding with the edge, uh, with the size of rectangles. However, as we are um, increasing the number of these dividing lines and decreasing the dimension of the largest of them, um, uh, obviously the sum of these rectangles will be closer and closer to the area of the base, right triangle. And whenever we are on each particular rectangle, we will build a, a parallelepiped to, uh, to the intersection with the plane going through ABC. Um, obviously, the sum of these parallelepipeds will be closer and closer to the sum uh, to the volume of the of the pyramid so let's just calculate um, uh, what exactly are um, the volumes of uh, a particular rectangle which is based on x and y here is x and here is y and uh, we will integrate it so what's the process of integration well, we have to summarize from 0 to a, right, by x, from 0 to a, this is all. So my integration by x will be from 0 to a. Now, for each particular x, what is the y? Well, it depends on where exactly I am uh, intersecting my perpendicular to the x-axis with this line. Now, obviously, what I have to do, I have to find out, to, to, to find out why, I have to basically find out the uh, equation which describes this line. Now, equation uh, which describes line uh, which uh, intersects uh, x and y axis at points A and B is very uh, simple. It's x divided by A plus y divided by B is equal to 1. Now let me just explain why. Because if x is equal to A and y is equal to 0, so this point, point A, point A has coordinates uh, A0, right? If you will substitute A0, x is equal to A and y is equal to 0, this would be 1, and this would be 0, so 1 is equal to 1, so the point satisfies. Now, B, B has coordinates uh, 0, B, right? 0 by X and B by Y. So if I will um, substitute coordinates Z, uh, 0, B as X and Y, this would be 0, and this would be B divided by B, 1. So again, corresponds. So both points, A and B, have coordinates which satisfy this equation. Well, Two points determine the uh, the line on the plane, so this is a correct representation. Now, from this correct representation, I can find very easily y. So, what is y? Uh, it's uh, b times one minus x divided by a, right? So, what my point right now is that I have to integrate by x from zero to a. But for integration by y, I have to integrate only until, uh, from the point x, I, uh, I integrate only to the point where it intersects this line. So from this point to this point. Which means I have to integrate from 0 to 1, um, no, b times 1. x divided by a. So that would be my integration by y. Okay, great. Now, what exactly I'm integrating? Well, I'm integrating, it would be dx times dy, right? That's my base, times the height. What's the height? Well, we also have to determine the equation which determined, determines the, the plane which connects these three points, right? And it's very similar to this one, because if you will write an equation 
x divided by a plus y divided by b plus uh, z divided by c equals 1, you will see with exactly the same clarity that all three points, now this one has coordinates uh, 0, 0, a, this one has coordinates um, 0, b, 0, and this one uh, 0, 0, c, right? So, if you will substitute any of these three points, let's take points C for instance. So the X is equal to 0, Y is equal to 0, and Z is equal to C. 0, 0, that would be 1. So point satisfies. Similarly with B, in this case this will be 1 and this will be 0, etc. So this is an equation of the plane. And if you define X and Y somewhere in, in the base, then the height of the, uh, 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 how is it called? <laughs> uh, well, the, the pri no, it's not a prism, it's parallelepiped, yes, forgot the word. So, the height of this parallelepiped would be exactly determined by this particular um, equation. So, what is this uh, for z? That's the height. Well, it's uh, c times 1 minus x divided by a minus uh, y divided by b. So that's my function which describes the height. So what is the element of the volume? It's dx, this little piece, dy, this little piece, that would be my base of this uh, parallelepiped, times height, which is this. So, dx and dy would be here, so this would be dx, this would be dy, and here I will have uh, c times 1 minus x a minus y b. So that's an integral which I'm supposed to calculate, double integral obviously, which I'm supposed to calculate, which will give me the answer to uh, the question about the volume of the pyramid. All right, let's take this integral. So, how do we do it? Well, first of all, we have to take the inner integral, considering x is a constant, so it's only dependent on y. So, it's basically a linear uh, function of y, right? So, um, this integral would be equal to, so let's preserve the outer integral, and inside I will have, um, well, in this particular case I can do it uh, the following way. I can break it in two integrals, from 0 to b times 1 minus x a of c times 1 minus x a, because this is the constant, right? c times y minus x dy plus another integral, well actually minus minus this minus so minus the same uh, limits of integration of c y divided by v dy equals. Okay, now, again, this is retained outside. Now, the first integral, now this is a constant, because x is a constant. So it goes outside of the integration, and I have integral from 0 to this of basically function which is equal to 1, and as we know, the antiderivative is uh, y in this case, which should be substituted using the Newton-Leibniz formula, the top minus bottom. Now, the top is, um, so c times 1 minus x divided by a is, a multiplier goes outside. Now, inside would be um, y in the limits from this to this. Well, this is 0 anyway, so just this one remains, so it's uh, b. one minus x divided by a. 
So that's the first integral. Now the second integral minus c b, that's a factor. Integral of y is y squared divided by two, right? Because the derivative of y squared divided by two is y. So I have to substitute again uh, top and bottom. Bottom is zero, so it disappears. So the only thing which remains is top, which is b squared one minus x over a squared divided by two. So that's my single now integral, which depends only on x. Okay, let me just wipe this out. I hope I did not make any arithmetic mistake. And if I didn't, then the result should be should be this. Well, let's see. Now this is just a plain um, uh, quadratic. Uh, polynomial. I think it would be easier if I would substitute t is equal to 1 minus x divided by a. You see here, here, and here it's all the same, right? Which means x is equal to uh, 1 minus t a 1 minus t, right? Which means dx is equal to the derivative of this which is uh, minus a times dt, right? Am I right? Right. Now, if x is equal to 0, t is equal to 1, right? And if x is equal to a, t is equal to 0, right? From here. If x is equal to 1, I have 0. Uh, I mean, if x is equal to a, I have 0. If x is equal to 0, I have 1. So my limits of integration now will be bottom limit is x is equal to 0, so it's from 1, to the top limit, which is 0. Inside, I will have c times b times t squared, right? t squared minus c divided by 2, also b squared and b, so only one b remains, and t squared again. And instead of dt, I have to put minus a, I mean, instead of dx, I have to put minus dt. Okay, so how, to the, how should I take this integral. Okay, now you see it's much easier, it's much more convenient thing. Well, first of all, I should put plus here equals. Um, I'll change uh, this minus to plus and I will change the limits of integration. As you remember from the course of integration, uh, changing the, uh, the limits, uh, exchanging the limits uh, uh, will cause uh, negative signs. So it's a times b and c. By the way, this minus this, this is one half of this, right? So what's remained is a b c divided by 2 integral from 1 to 0 of t squared dt. Am I right? Now this minus this is one half of BC times A and the T square goes from 0 to 1 because I've changed the signs. Now the derivative of T cube divided by 3 A, B, C divided by 2 so it's T cube divided by 3 from 0 to 1 Right? That's what it is. The derivative of t cubed by 3 is t squared. So, if you will substitute... So, this is my application of newton leibniz formula, and as a result, I have this formula, which is, if I will substitute 1, I will have a, b, c divided by 6, right? And 0 will give me 0. So, this is the total result of the integration which corresponds to this one from geometry. Now, 
um, it's exactly the same um, type of process of dividing my um, uh, three-dimensional figure into small pieces where we know how to calculate uh, the volume of because this is the parallelepipeds all parallelepipeds with dx times dy uh, square uh, base and the height uh, determined by the formula for z which which we had which we have done earlier so again the integration is actually dividing your uh, three-dimensional piece into infinite number of infinitely small pieces so to speak as long as you know how to calculate uh, uh, each piece then you integrate by x and by y in this particular case to get the final result and as we see the final result is the same now um, can I say that this is a proof of this formula well, in some way, yes, because whenever um, we derive the same formula in the course of geometry, we were really did exactly the same thing. Uh, we were dividing um, with uh, uh, planes the whole height, and it, it's exactly the same. We uh, basically uh, calculated the um, the volume of each uh, of each piece and then we summed the sum summed up the result and we went to a limit which is actually a derivation of everything which i have basically assumed known and which uh, basically is uh, the foundation of the newton leibniz formula whenever you're integrating so yes it can be considered in some way as as a just more rigorous proof of the same formula Okay, so that's it for today. Uh, as I was saying, this is, at least I think, this is my last lecture of the course of uh, mathematics for teenagers. And, uh, well, I don't know when exactly I will start the, the physics, but I think it's very important. Uh, I have to uh, really tell you that the course of physics will be really very much oriented on the mathematics which we have learned here. It would be a theoretical physics, if you wish, but only on a classical level. And I invite you, obviously, to go to these lectures as they are, as they will come uh, into the unizor.com. Everything will be there. I have already prepared the contents uh, and gradually I will start filling up with lectures. So thanks very much for your patience, your participation, and uh, good luck in your endeavors. Thank you.